If you are from France, you may already know of the artist named Israel Sylvester. He is awesome, or Israel Sylvestre, I don't know how you pronounce it. But either way, I have always been seeing his arts, and I wanted to do a collection honoring him as well, because he's another one of those artists where you're not really taught about, kind of like uh, Piranesi, but, uh, but even different. And he had an amazing experience, it seems like, being like artist to the kings, and are so many different kinds of uh, special privileges as an artist in the, the Sophia, amazing so this is how it kind of starts off but he does a lot of different artworks in here that are absolutely phenomenal in detail and depict again a time that is impressive beyond uh, anything it's our dream this stuff this is our dream architecture you can't really have something that looks better all these fancy things that they do in like modern architecture and whatnot like i it just doesn't feel the same it doesn't look the same it doesn't at all survive catastrophe the same and are not built as strong and as beautiful this stuff is just built with this pl this place whatever it is in mind earth in mind in the physics that we are succumbed to here and it's just amazing their gardens their falls their everything is so immaculate and precise that you have to wonder who were these these establishments for who were these what were these places really for who like were they just uh, like is that like a hotel complex is it a uh, like the, just a palace for royalty and their the people that work for them and everything or, like what are all these things what is the purpose of this fountain is it just decoration or is it to p power is it a healing fountain? Is it for amazing water to be that, that people can take, the public? All of these amazing things, shows. Um, this was actually a uh, stagnant water, a quadra, quadrilateral stagnant water aquarium, <laughs> which is, I don't know, I don't know what is the point of that. I stayed. <laughs> is there a way to purify it? Was this guy just observing it and thinking it to be stagnant? Were all of these people just observing something more ancient that they didn't understand but they'd repurposed? Kind of like us now when we go into these things we can't find bathrooms, we can't find any way to heat the place in the winter and um, all this stuff but uh, look at the perspective. Wow, what detail in that engraving. My God, this guy was a master and his details are incredible and that looks just fantastically old and how big was that and how deep did it go how deep is the foundation for all of these these moats what is even the true purpose of moats is it to like i mean how much of the place was underwater that you could go into in those underground places this place is absolutely just astounding. I don't know if this exists at all now, but someone has to dig around there and find any type of remnant from this time. What could be going on here? And who? And this is all way post construction, way post like figuring out how to do all this stuff. So the ancients were just absolute masters in ways we can't even fathom today. And it's it's just really more and more of a realization while we observe beautiful art. Like, what is the true nature of the intention of these artists and the people that hired them to have them go around the world and document these? Is it for just posterity stake, archaeological stake, uh, architectural, uh, educational, or is it, uh, you know, to document things like the photos before uh, San Francisco and you document all these things before they are gone forever? and. That way we can show everyone what we were missing. But these were, you know, maybe they didn't know who the creators were or have any clue on some of these. And I'm willing to believe a lot more than we think of them because, I mean, all of these have phenomenal piping in them, the plumbing. You'd have to dig all these things tremendously to get the, the systems underground working. And so if they were doing this in the, these times, they were already mastering this in so many different places then it's just what was the whole world like and all over the place we see buildings like this and uh, you know it wasn't going on in just Paris and France and in England it was happening absolutely everywhere Germany and America it had to have been happening because they can't 
have not gone over here and we have plenty of resources over here to do all this and with the lack of truth and trust in any of the stories they tell us about this country's history it is very believable that this civilization was very well laid out just like this i think france is one of those places that is is being slightly neglected in the in the ancient history aspect of it because france and the buildings in france which are mostly in this are just absolutely some of the best in the in the world. It's like England today. Some of the surviving ones are unbelievable. I can't even imagine what the ones that have been lost in my time and way beyond. But all of these, like these were everywhere in the world. There's no way they didn't cross the tiny Atlantic in comparison. And I've seen this one before. This one is pretty amazing. I, can't, I don't know if any of these are still standing. Some of them I'm sure have to be, but France, wow, what is your deal? What is the story over there? And all those churches, the powerhouses, the ether generating devices, the just mastery of structure. And that one looks like it's clearly been broken. When was that broken? When was that started? Why? You know, it's just a gradual decay from whatever the prime time was. And thank God for these artists for being able to capture them. It really is the best. Uh, to be able to see this and get inspired by their work and to uh, wonder what's under all our mountains and in the Grand Canyon if you were to keep carving in and uh, take a uh, dig deep and around the Mississippi, around the biggest rivers in America, around the Amazon, would you continuously find civilizations like this? Because these kind of buildings, again, exist all over South America and there's old pictures of them from Brazil. Uh, Chile, uh, uh, all over Colombia, it's, it's so many. There's such a ridiculous need to understand this history because it is, you know, we need to know if we are the puppets of uh, the creators, the people, the builders, the, 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 the remainders, the scrap finders of some ancient civilization where we came from that may have created us, that may have done some incredible things in our history in our story of humanity that we can gather if we knew the true purpose of all these things the true originators the true age all these details of these glimpses of magic that we see and because pretty soon if all of these scraps are gone all of these files all these artworks are erased they're just people are just going to grow up seeing what they see on TV and what they see in their small area. These terrible boxes, these run-down buildings, these decrepit things, and they're never going to know palaces like this exist. This church, <laughs> what? They're never going to know that they'll be able to ponder unless we can discover it and make it happen. Look at that! Wow! And how deep does that go? How do you even start to build something like that? And all those materials, what? Where do you get them? Who's doing the building? Who is the real architects of this? They have all these plans in ancient artworks and ancient books, all these different plans that just show the diagrams of everything, show the maps of the room, show the measurements and everything like that, but all of that can be done after a build. I want to see how it was done, the process, the step-by-step -step, uh, of, of how much materials were used and uh, things like that, how much it cost, where they got it from. All of that must somehow be uncovered somewhere in some vault or an unknown uh, tapped basement of some of these buildings and uh, how have they filled them in uh, god bless those people that can dive down into the depths and go digging but we'd, we need to find more and just make, make a scene for this type of ability to be able to raise money for causes that can go to some of these places and take a little bit of a Take a little bit of a deep dive and try to find some treasures in places other than Egypt because I think these treasures exist underground everywhere, all over the world, and they only better our knowledge of ourselves and our knowledge of the world around us and how we can somehow hope to cope with all of the craziness and make it better and easier and pure again because that's what... I like to believe the creators of all these masterful buildings and amazing works of just phenomenal structure that last how many ever thousands or hundreds of years. It's at this point where I let the video sit for a while and as I did, someone on Reddit in the Tartaria page posted a, or this, uh, one of the pages here 
and it is from a book, Three Years Among the Comanche, and I feel like this is one of those little tidbits of insight that adds to the collection of images that you're seeing with this artist and with all these other artists. But in the next grouping of images, I'm going to show some pictures of some buildings in the mountains, and we've always been curious about that. And here is a very interesting take, which I find has to be, um, you know, taken into consideration. On these pages it says, and I will go into this in another video, so stay tuned. This is the legend of the Comanches as he related it. Innumerable moons ago, a race of white men, ten feet high and far more rich and powerful than any white people now living, here inhabited a large range of country, and this is in America, extending from the rising to the setting sun. Their fortifications crown the summits of the mountains, protecting their populous cities situated in the intervening valleys. They excelled every other nation which has flourished, either before or since, in all manner of cunning handicraft, were brave and warlike, ruling over the land they had wrested from its ancient possessors with a high and haughty hand. Compared with them, the pale faces of the present day were as pygmies, both in art and arms. They drove the Indians from their homes, putting them to the sword and occupying the valleys in which their fathers had dwelt before them since the world began. At length, in the height of their power and glory, when they remembered justice and mercy no more, and became proud and lifted up, the great spirit descended from above, sweeping them with fire and deluge from the face of the earth. The mounds we had seen on the tablelands were the remnants of their fortresses and the crumbling ruins that surrounded us, all that remained of a mighty city. And I will go deeper into that, but wow, just take into consideration that, even just from the perspective that it's a lot of it just seems right when you look at these buildings, that they had to have been built by people that were way taller than us, people that were way more advanced than us when you see the cathedrals and so much else that was happening. And when you consider the buildings on top of the mountains and ones that seem to grow out of mountains or seem to be carved into mountains or seem to be melted from something or giant trees or anything, then how can you possibly not just love or just embellish the imaginative possibility that there were giants here, they were highly civilized, and they were here way before us. And they may have created everything that we know about, every single thing. And these aren't just in America, these that you're seeing here are all over Europe. So that Comanche uh, take is from America, but these buildings, you know that if a race was that big, it's not going to stay in any of these continents. It could hop and hop and hop, and it could definitely stay out of a certain zone. And I'm beginning to think about that, and I will dive deeper into it another day, but, you know, it always wonders how did these, I always wonder how did we, how did this ancient amazing society lose to us, the pygmies, the small, like, slave workers that or the miners or whatever we were the uh the plebes the the whatever the chattel how did we end up winning and how did we end up getting them away and i and i'm beginning to think that they had to have uh, made it a conscious decision to leave us here to be the the to whatever because how could they possibly lose to these people? These advanced society, they must have just been like, whatever, we have so much land beyond what these people call the poles. Let's just go to that and we'll let them stay here. They can enjoy and they can uh, take in some of our buildings and try to learn from them, try to find our discoveries. They can keep digging and they can find what our ancestors created and built and designed for them and for us and uh, they can just have that zone. We've got an infinite playground and plane to play with, and that little part over there, that little blip they call Earth, can just uh, be taken over by the, the freaks or whoever's conquering that and controlling those people over there. That's what I could picture them kind of doing, as opposed to losing to um, the evil that's taken over this world. I'd like to believe that the good has conquered the other domains and dominions and realms beyond this one that they are not slaves to the same nonsense that has been just permeated this zone that we are in in our realm. I think that the people that created this would be way smarter than any of this and wouldn't live in lies and perpetuate lies and do all this nasty stuff. These buildings, these artworks, this time that it shows is just so well developed 
well inspired and in harmony with nature and all of the physics that we still have no idea about and combine that with the humanity and powers of the human that we have no idea about as you have a clean system in a clean world with clean harmony and symmetry and beauty all over the place animals fresh who knows what the language and everything was what the sounds from the bells, the chimes, the free energy, the power, the ether, the copper, the gold, the minerals, the diamonds, what all of those combos did upon the human body. We have no idea, but at some point they were here. And look at these buildings. How could they not, how could they have been built by us in the same time as people were building wooden huts? And then they're built, they had these things built? No way. These were definitely built by a amazing race of beings that are probably still watching us, waiting for the right time to to do what, to give us what we deserve. And these are the houses we have now. And I just wanted to switch it up in the way that I show my art, and just to show you some of the other potential because I do love architecture. And these are my early uh, kind of house drawings that I've done for modern homes, and they're just so different: the structure, the power, the feel. Uh, you know, these houses are nice too, and they're just so different than the old ones. They could all be swept away in a storm. They could all be just, you know, just destroyed so easily. But again, they're our home. And I wonder how these buildings had become and felt like home to these other ancient beings who had a completely different concept of everything, including that of home. Were they wanderers? Were they nomads? Were they able to go everywhere, anywhere, in the mind, in the body, in the physical, in the mental, in the transcendent, in multi-dimensions? I bet they knew so much more and could do so much we can't even fathom. This is my old house, the one I grew up in. What a treasure. But that is what home is and may we discover the homes of the ancients and um, continue to use our imaginations to fulfill our destiny whatever the heck it is there is so much waiting to be discovered right under us way beyond our realm and inside us each in our heads in our minds in our own potential may we all find it bless you all